basically 3D printing or additive manufacturing is a technology that will complement the conventional manufacturing process and that's what we need to understand. Hello, welcome back to MTD CNC. We are in India. What a privilege it is to be here, and more specifically in Pune. I'm with my buddy Nanad today, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about 3D printing, as he is an expert here in India, and I have the pleasure to speak with you. So Nanad, thank you so much for being here with MTD. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you so much. It has been a bright day. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely Thanks. a pleasure. Well, knowing that you're an expert in 3D printing, I think it's important to convey to the audience here what 3D printing is, where the benefits are, and how it incorporates with Mark IVs and Philips as well. What's it been like for the last few years? Perfect. I mean, it has been an incredible journey for Philips as an additive. Basically, Philips uh, ventured, ventured into additive uh, for quite long, but uh, Philips India and Philips USA have been associated with Mark IVs for almost uh, more than a year now. And I think we have been pretty much successful about it. Uh, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of Mark Forged metals and composite 3D printing, we have been serving the industry with great amount of applications. So uh, basically, with the, uh, with the help of Mark Forged, uh, we have been associated for almost more than a year. Uh, we are associated with Mark Forged in India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Middle East, as well as North America. So for Philips Additive Team, it has been an incredible journey of Mark Forged 3D printing machines. Well, and yeah. well, You have quite the territory, right? And you know, when I talk with people, it seems there's really unique perspectives on 3D printing as a whole. Some think it's getting ready to take over everything. Yeah. Some think that it's too slow and it just doesn't work. And then there's <laughs> the middle ground where we're sitting today where we go, here's where it works, here's why it works, and here's the materials it works in, right? Perfect. So can we talk about some of the machines that you have and what they do? Absolutely. I mean, uh, majority of the uh, uh, manufacturing uh, community feels that 3D printing is actually going to take over the complete CNC manufacturing or the conventional manufacturing, which is not the scenario. Uh, basically, 3D printing or additive manufacturing is a technology that will complement the conventional manufacturing process, and that's what we need to understand. And uh, right here, actually, the composite 3D printer and the metal 3D printer of Mark Forst, they are the ones which can actually handhold the conventional manufacturing industry in a very right way. Starting from, if we talk about the composites, we have an applications wherein we can replace few of the metal parts into composites, soft jaws, uh, basically robotic arms, end of arm tooling, fixtures, even drones. All of these exciting parts can be 3D printed with the help of composites. And when it comes to metals, you can actually print copper, you can actually print tool steels, stainless steels, might as well in conal. So here is an exciting range of materials that you can absolutely print on metals or metal printers of Mark Forst, and you have great range of materials which can be printed on composite printer of Mark Forst. You've used the word exciting a couple of times, and I like that word as well. It is all of the technology to me is fascinating. Every single day I'm learning something new. You also mentioned that it can replace some of those uh, harder materials, or not necessarily harder materials, but materials that are traditional in the aluminums and steels when it comes to the jaws of robots or the work coating soft jaws, whatever it might be. But I want to convey to the audience who's watching right now, and this might be the first video they've seen for 3D printing, when you say replace, how is that possible? It's the same strength as something like aluminum, but lighter? Is that how the composites work? Absolutely, bingo, that's, the perfect, uh, that's a perfect way to explain it. Basically, composite materials are lighter in weight, and you can redesign the parts for additive manufacturing. I mean, there's a way. We design always the parts for particular manufacturing process. So whenever you want to replace these parts from conventional process to additive, you basically got to redesign them. So when you redesign those parts for additive, you can definitely make them lighter, in a very smarter design with a lighter weight, you can get an equivalent strength as well. And we have successfully proven those applications into the Indian manufacturing industry very confidently. Again, I'm gonna use the word fascinating because as <laughs> technology moves along, thinking something like a plastic, the way it's structured on the inside, having the same strength as aluminum, giving us a lighter weight to machine because some of us are pushing the limits of those weights already. Right. So giving us the same strength and lighter weight, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Plus. On top of that, we can get extremely creative, can't we, and make some, some neat designs that you can't do from machining. Absolutely, absolutely. The majority excitement in this case is particularly the kind of infill structure that you can see on these kind of parts. You know, you basically have an infill structure, triangular, or you know, different, different type of infill structure, which basically reduces the weight of the part. And in terms of composites, you can reinforce the onyx material with the help of continuous carbon fiber. That is what 
is the unique offering by Mark Force, and that is what makes it uh, stronger parts, which can actually withstand the kind of forces that are there by the conventional manufacturing process. So, uh, with the help of redesigning of these parts, or with the help of infrastructures, we can basically make the parts lighter, and we can smartly manufacture these parts for 3D printing, which actually suits the process requirement. On top of that, what I think is kind of neat is that traditionally, when we need these parts, we have to use our machine to create these parts. Now, right. we have a separate additive printer here, so we're keeping that spindle spinning all the time, constantly making us money. You are making the fantastic point right here. Basically, the major aspect of composite or metal 3D printing, when I say it will complement the conventional manufacturing ecosystem, isn't in this particular manner. You can actually manufacture these uh, you know, non-production items, like fixtures, toolings. All of these non-production items you can actually manufacture on 3D printing machines, which will give you the exact same properties. And that is the reason it will complement the manufacturing ecosystem that you already have in place. And that's why you can run your CNC machines for production scenarios, and you can use the 3D printing technology for the non-production items as well. That is also one misconception that many of the audiences have, that you know, 3D printing cannot be used for production. But production is, is a very specific scenario for every industry. And that is the reason the right use of 3D printing depends upon the right application in the right industry. You know, I love it when uh, conversations come full circle, right? You start something in the beginning, you feel it there. Let's talk a little bit more, if it's okay, about the metal side of things. We've Absolutely. talked about composites. Right. Now, whether it's a misconception or a truth, I'll let you clarify to the audience, but there's an idea that printing metal currently is just too slow to sustain. Would you mind educating our audience on the side of metal 3D printing? Absolutely. Uh, basically, in terms of metal 3D printing machines of Mark Forced, uh, the process has basically three stages. The first stage, basically, it's a printing of a metal, uh, wherein the filament is made up of metal powders and binders and wax. And once you print that particular part, it has to then undergo two stage processes, which is washing and sintering. And that actually gives you an end use part, which can have a hardness of as high as 64 to 65 HRC. And uh, although, although the process may be slower com compared with the conventional processes, it is actually beneficial for the parts which are non-standard items, which are non-production items. That is where basically the use of metal 3D printing is very much useful. And bringing this relationship together again, oftentimes when something is printed, is it then just kind of cleaned up on one of the machines for maybe that exact precision? Yes. That's normally how it works. It doesn't typically come off, but it can come off as a finished product or we're still Absolutely. throwing it in the machines? Absolutely. Uh, it can come off as a, a definite end use part as well, but it is always recommended to basically use for a post-processing so as to give a final cut of machining because then you get a fantastic finish, you get the precision as well. The tolerances of these machines are basically about point mm, about 100 microns. So if at all you want tolerances which are lesser than that, then you got to machine it. That makes sense. I'm learning so much from you today, and I love learning. I truly do. I, I've walked around, and I've seen 3D printed parts that have been cut in half, and I look at the inside of these parts, and doing machining for almost 20 years, right. I go, there's no way I could remove material from this on the inside and make this part. And that's where that 3D printing and metal comes in handy, right? So maybe we clean up a few parts on the outside, but we're creating intricacies that actually can dive into the creativity of our CAD CAM guys without fighting one another, the machinists <laughs> of the CAD CAM guys. You are absolutely right. I mean, one example is, again, this kind of part. You know, you can see these kind of infrastructures. It reduces the weight of the part, plus on the outside it has this particular skin. So no one knows, but the weight of this part is very much less compared with the conventional manufacturing process. So that's the beauty of additive manufacturing. Are there any other parts here that you'd like to talk about in detail a little bit more? They look really creative. Absolutely. So I'm curious if you'd like to just kind of show the audience what we're doing here. <laughs> Absolutely. So here is also one uh, cutting tool body that we have manufactured. We also have the materials of H13, A2, and D2 grades of tool steels uh, with which you can actually manufacture the cutting tool bodies as well. I mean, we have really great customers who have experimented these kind of cutting tool bodies for their end use part, and it has been successful. So these wow. are one few exciting applications. One more part that I can also show is about this copper part. You can also print copper material in this, by the way. Hmm. And you can actually print, uh, print heat exchangers or basically induction coils, all these kind of parts on this copper material on the Metal X machine right here behind us. That is absolutely awesome. And where is Mark Forge made? Mark Forge is made completely in North America. The company is based in Boston. They have a manufacturing unit in Boston. They basically make all those machines over there itself. And now that you got everyone excited about Mark Forge, where can they look you up? What's your website at Philips? How can they contact you? 
Absolutely. We have a website, uh, www.philipscorp.com. Uh, it basically takes you territory-wise. Sometimes it can go to North America, or if the Indian users or Asia-Pacific users are there, it takes them directly to our Indian website. And there we have all the information about the additive solutions offered by Philips Additive. Well, my friend, I love learning from experts like yourself. I really, really do appreciate it. Guys, I hope you're equally as enlightened or more so than I am at this current moment. You did a wonderful job conveying a message, and we appreciate you. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Tony.